Hey, it's Rob Snowett. Hope your quarantine is going okay. I went out and fished some small streams yesterday. We also got a new podcast on small streams uploaded to iTunes and your favorite listening method. Today's little talk video is going to be about crayfish. A lot of it has to do with George and Martha over there that I've been observing for the last several months. I'm going to also have in this video some close-up pictures of them, maybe some videos too, and some anatomy pictures of what a crayfish actually looks like and the types of that it describes. So first I'm going to show you some crayfish patterns that I've been using throughout the years, and then I'm going to tie the local favorite, and then I'm going to tie just my old version that I came up with. I've already tied my pre-bug, so I don't think I need a video for that one. If you want another pre-bug video, we can do that. So let me start off with Gabe Whitlock's Near Enough Sculpin. It's a pretty fantastic representation of a crayfish. It's small. It's weighted in the back. It has swimmerettes. It has fins or what they call these pincers. It also has some antenna and mouthpieces to it. So that is a, it's a pretty accurate crayfish representation. Here's a darker version. And I've caught trout with these fishing yellow breeches with my buddy Philippe a long time ago. Other than that, I really haven't fished these flies at all. Things to remember also that crayfish are nocturnal. So when you're fishing a crayfish fly, they're probably always going to be under rocks. A crayfish out during the day is a pretty dumb organism. You'll notice that those had the hook riding upside down, whereas the clouser crayfish, and this one is made with furry foam. The clouser crayfish rides hook down, which is an oddity because it's going to get snagged and caught up on the bottom. But it has little claws, it has a shell carapace, it has mouth parts and little swimmers. And it's going to swim like that. It's a pretty cool little crayfish fly. Highly intelligently designed. A weird one is this old thing from back in the day. I don't even remember the name of this. I know these catch some sea trout too. So it's got split shot or little lead in the bottom. It's got a body and feathers. It's got compound eyes. That's the first eyes we've seen. It's got mouth parts. Again, this one is going to ride hook down, which is going to get snagged or caught. It also determines where you're going to hook the fish in the mouth. Notice the long antennae. The antenna on George right now are his entire body length. So with antenna, he's over six inches long. And the hook on this one is out. So here's a little version of that without eyes, without weights to it. Just a little shrimpy looking crayfish with foam. Being that it's foam, it's got to be down on the bottom because that's where crayfish live. They're often not going to be found up in the water column unless they're moving or crawling up something and get dislodged. Another one you can use, this was the old Orvis curly tail bunny. Similar, it's a saltwater fly. It's on a salty hook. You can also read this. I don't like the rubber uh, tail on it. That just gets pierced by the actual hook or gets ripped off. If you want to watch how crayfish eat, just Google. There's some crazy videos on YouTube of people dropping crayfish into aquariums. There's also videos of people just hooking crayfish and dropping them in and watching bass react. Everything is going to eat a crayfish. It's a huge meal of protein. And the problem is they've got huge pincers on them. And you don't want to get, they're not that strong. They're more of a show. So when a crayfish is cornered, it's going to put those up. Like, hey, I'm going to pinch you if you mess with me. The problem is George barely even has claws. He's huge. And his claws are diminutive. Most crayfish patterns have huge claws on them. That's the dominating feature. Now, if you are an organism and you want to bite the fish, if you want to go after something and eat it, having big claws is not ideal because you may get injured in your mouth, eyes, or whatever trying to eat it. So I tie mine with little claws. Still might have them in that position. Here's another one I'll use. We've talked about this before. That's just a reaper fly. This one has a weed guard on it. That could be a, a crayfish fly. Goes along the bottom. One I picked up from a guy in Ohio, Mike Dokuto. This is my interpretation of his pre-bug. 
It's not as pretty as his, but it catches fish. It's the only crayfish I've ever caught really, really big carp on the first time I went out with this. It was an awesome day. And that is just some free hackle, a little bit of rabbit zonker from mouth, and then free hackle wrapped around the body. Small dumbbell eyes. This is for shallow water fishing. Size 8 hook, maybe? Crayfish also come in a variety of colors. So you want to have blue ones, green ones. They come in red, oranges, yellows. When I didn't have material to tie this anymore to go to Ohio, I tied up this stupid looking thing. This is just mouthpiece made out of zonker, some peacock hurl, brown hackle, dumbbell eyes, and then shellback. There is nothing about this fly that says, I am some attractively tied, delicious looking organism. Anybody could tie this. There's no talent involved in this. And I caught some huge carp the first time I went out with this. I just wanted some junk flies and this was it. So it goes to show you don't need some elaborate, intricate, articulated crayfish pattern to catch big fish. The one I also tied years ago is this thing. It's a pretty cool one. I don't know if I've actually caught fish on it. I'm going to tie it for you. This thing has got to be 16, 17 years old, and I'll break that down. But again, it's got mouth parts, swimmerettes, tail. If you look at most crayfish flies, there's no tail on them. One of the biggest features on George is his tail. He has a huge tail like that on the bottom that he curls under when he's chilling or when he's getting away from something. Now, the most famous Virginia crayfish pattern is easily the Crelex. I picked this up at Mossy Creek Fly Shop years and years ago. This was invented by Chuck Kraft in the 90s. Chuck passed away about a month ago in March. And it is very simple. It's ultra suede tail, hook riding up. Chenille body and rubber legs. Eyes painted to match. It's about as simple and as effective as you can get for a crayfish pattern. I tie mine sometimes in orange. Just try to the beer tie. I'll also do them in a little bit of brown, a little chocolate action. You can see that if there's not a bump of chenille under there, the tail, uh, the claws drop down. So this gives the impression of claws or mouthpieces, but it doesn't go into great detail, making it all sorts of difficult to tie. So I'm going to tie for you one of these, and then I'm going to tie for you one of these. So my thing and my thoughts with crayfish flies is they should have mouth parts, antenna, maybe eyes, a tail, swimmerettes, and a weight on the bottom to get them down to the bottom of the water. So I'm going to tie a Crelex fly, not a Crelex, I'm going to tie a claw dad now. I am going to start with, make this easier for you to see, uh, size two hook. Put that in my regal vise. Nice and snug. Ready? Listen to that. I'm going to take me some black 210 denier, and I'm just going to start that thread right here. And this is just going to fill in the gap between the two dumbbell eyes. I will be using plain dumbbell eyes, size large. I'm just not gonna have one right here. And I'm going to tie that down right here. There you have it. Typical Clouser dumbbell eyes. Instead of chenille, I'm gonna use my Helgramite yarn. And the next video will be all about Helgramite. This is a super buggy material. I think it's what Bill Skilton used to sell. I don't know. And I'm just going to tie that in. Wrap down. Back. So what I'm going to do now is wrap this a couple times. Then I'm going to take my claw dad tails. They're brown. They're ultra suede. There's different companies that make ultra suede parts for crayfish. But I'm going to, it's already got a little hole. I'm going to now just take that, pop it in, put my hook back in, 
I'm going to find that little piece of leather or ultra suede right here. I'm going to wrap back up. I'm going to wrap that down. So now I've got my claws in. This is one of the easiest flies you're ever going to tie. And I'm going to wrap this buggy looking, highly flammable yarn on. You can purchase this yarn through my Squarespace store. I'm going to wrap a couple times around the head. All right, I'm going to wrap it off the head of the fly, but it's not. It's actually the, the like that. It's got this in pinks, browns, blacks, grays, olives, purples, reds, whites, chocolate brown. So now we have what looks like coming together a pretty fish fly. So I'm going to put that back in. And the last thing you're going to need is rubber legs. You can use brown. And I'm going to measure to about here and the eye of the hook. Take my, my big scissors that do not line up. I figured out a way to make them line up. You put some foam on the inside. See, I had two pairs. This one now lines up because I filled in the gap there. These big ones, they don't line up, and it pisses me off. I'm going to cut that. Now I've got my rubber legs. I am going to split this in half. Now I'm going to take this, line it up just like where I cut it. Couple of wraps here. Nice and snug. I'm going to rotate it over. And I'm going to take in the second skirt. You don't have to use this many rubber legs. It looks cool when you do. And I'm going to wrap this in. And the way Chuck had it, there's a little bit of a, a wide wrap here. So I've got it looking like this. I'm going to half hitch now two or three times. Since I'm using a little bit of black, I could throw in some solar res bone dry black in there. I don't see it at the moment. So we'll just use regular solar res. Soak that in a little bit. Hit it with my solar res lamp. And now we're just going to split all these up. All you got to do is peel them apart and you start having what looks like some kind of alien-esque crayfish fly. It's simple. It's crazy effective. It has most of the parts of a crayfish identified as a crayfish. And that's what bass are going to key in on. I fish these with my rod tip. So I'm using the rod tip like this. A little bit of leader out. All right, I'm going to pop it off now. So I've got the top. Let's do the bottom. Tonight I should be in the Keys having dinner by the ocean chasing baby Tarkin. I believe the Keys are actually closed down to outsiders now. And I've got this last part now. Let me just pull them apart separating them out. If I do all of these, it's going to take an hour. So that is the gist of Funky Claw Dad. That's a pretty cool looking crayfish. It's big and jig esque. How does that compare to George? We're going to line George up now. Editor. Okay. We're back. Next up, I'm going to do another crayfish. This one. And because it has foam on it, it's got to be heavy and sink down. So again, I'm going to use the same size hook. It's a fly shack. It is a fly shack. I can't read this thing. Same thread. I'm going to tie this one in black. 
my thread. I'm going to use different eyes this time. I'm going to be using they're gone. I had black dumbbell eyes lined up. And I think they rolled off. There we go. These are large painted black lead eyes. These are by Hairline. So they will look like this, but painted. These are unpainted. And I'm going to tie this in. I want this fly to be heavy and sink on the bottom and just chill there. Do not hit your eight weight or anything else with the fly like this. It's heavy. Okay. So now we need to tie in some mouth parts. So we're going to come all the way down here. We're going to take some black zonker. Cut a piece off. And I'm going to tie it leather side up. Tied in. Now I'm going to take some crazy legs. Grizzly crazy flutter legs. Take two of those. I'm going to now, they're on my line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold them over, bring them up. Now I can slide them down. Now I've got some mouth parts up in there. Next thing I'm going to do is tie in a piece of my cocktail, same that I would use on a bacon fly. And then I am going to body material. I accidentally ordered this stuff years ago. It's, it's got a cool color. It's not my favorite, but. This is holographic cactus chenille black. I'm going to tie this in. Notice that I have it in a ball in my hand. I didn't cut a specific piece off. This means I can not waste any of it. Guaranteed you I've got tons of it, but I don't need to use any. So I'm going to cut it. I can use just what I need doing this. I'm going to put this back. In the bag. Now I'm going to tie. So another thing with George is he's got a very large cephalothorax. So that is the section of the head and the abdomen as together. And most crayfish neglect having that huge body and then it tapers down like a tadpole almost to the tail. So that right there could just be some kind of wacky crayfish. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a piece of foam, some snow white foam here. I'm going to measure out what I want. And then I am going to just cut this to shape. So I'm going to come in here, take that out. Cut out some little notches. You can eliminate buoyancy by cutting out foam you don't need. Make your fly seat go to play. And now I'm going to just kind of curve this front carapace. That looks a little thin. What I'm going to do now is pop a hole in the foam, slide the hook. You know what? I need to wrap my thread. I did this completely backwards, didn't I? Can't wrap my thread. All right. Let me just do it this way. I haven't tied one of these in years. Let's see what happens. All right. So my phone now is down, just like we had on the claw dad. And I am going to just do a couple of wraps, giving it segmentation. I'm going to get back here now to the eye of the hook, and I'm going to peel this back. 
than do a couple half hitches because I expect this thing to get absolutely crushed by the guts. Break that off. So now I'm going to do a little bit more trimming. Pop a little hole there. And because George has a round tail, I'm just going to make this a little rounded. And we're going to cut down that little phallic part right there for us. So now we've got a crayfish. Really simple to make. Just like that. I'm not going for an exact replication. I am going for something that is going to move through the water, have some density, and look at how small those claws are on it. I'm not focusing on having claws at all. I want it to look like this, simple, non-threatening meal that any carnivorous predatory fish would absolutely attack because there's a lot of calories in it. There's a lot of protein. It's made of chitin. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this one. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about Helgramites. We're going to talk about some Bill Skilton Helgramites. Got some snow up up here. And I hope you all have a good Pesach. Happy Wednesday to you. Enjoy your quarantine. Be safe. And go fishing if you can. We'll see you guys another time. Bye-bye.